Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, How Pipetting Can Change the Way Beverages Are Tested, a Shared Perspective from FEMSA and Sartorius. I'm Alexis Krause of LabRoots, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. Today's educational web seminar is presented by LabRoots and brought to you by Sartorius. To learn more about our sponsor, please visit their website at sartorius.com. We encourage you to participate by submitting as many questions as you want at any time you want during the presentation. To do so, simply type them into the Ask a Question box located on the left-hand side of your screen and click Send. We'll answer as many of your questions as we have time for at the end of the presentation. You may also submit any technical issues here as well, for example, if you have trouble seeing or hearing the presentation. I would like to now welcome our speakers, Gabriela Sanchez, the Senior Demand Planner at Hugos de Valle Santa Clara, and Palos Artimo, Product Manager for Pipetting and Dispensing at Sartorius, a leading international partner of the biopharmaceutical industry and the research sector. Gabriela, Paulos, welcome to both of you. Gabriela, you may now begin your presentation. Hello, everyone. Thank you for the introduction. The topic today is how electronic pipettes can test your beverage for you. The agenda today is microbiological processing with micropipettes, then microbiological processing, and at the end, benefits of electronic pipettes. Jugo del Valle. Jugo del Valle is part of the Coca-Cola FEMSA Group. The Coca-Cola FEMSA Group is the most important bottling company in Mexico. We manufacture beverages as juice, nectar, isotonic drink, milk, vegetable milk, tea, flavor beverage. Our products are focused on different market segments, kids, sport beverage, and nutrition. As you can see on the slide, it shows the timeline of Hugo del Valle through a time, starting on the year 1924, when people from Santa Clara used to make home delivery meals. And 23 years later, officially, Hugo del Valle was found on 1947 and start operation at the Pozotlan plant, who is the main bottling juice and isotonic beverage. By the time, Hugo del Valle diversified the products and made the introduction of twist off system, opening of bottles, and foray into infant beverage, introducing the aluminum packaging and start selling half gallon milk and a gallon milk in Mexico. Other important event occur in 1992, when Zacatecas plan start operation, the second one most important processing plant in Mexico. Hugo del Valle continues grow, grow, growing up, acquiring branches at Florida 7 and Santa Clara branch, launching of tea, vitamin water, and ice cream flavor. After 2007, when Hugo del Valle was acquired by the Coca-Cola company, continues acquiring branches focused on nutrition and sport market. Production process. Next, I will explain a little bit about the production process inside Hugo del Valle. First of all, fruit arrival to the plant. Washing procedure starts. After Nectar extraction bottling, volume and presence of strange materials is checked, metallic particles, plastic or organic materials. Quality control for approval and final distribution, including physicochemical and analysis and microbiological analysis. 
These analyses are carried out in a Coca-Cola laboratory in Florida, United States, and are sent to the plants in Mexico with their approval for use. Pioneers in innovation. The innovation has been a constant in order to remain in the preference of consumers. Easy open it. Creative packing option. Aluminum can, mini bottles, triangle boxes. Thanks to the variety of packing size and flavors, we ensure the quality of the products and the issue used by user no matter if it is a children or an adult. How electronic uh, can test your beverage for you? A second topic, microbiological processing. Microbiological processing. Depending on the consistency of each sample, the seeding method will be classified. About 60% of beverages are processed by the slit to agar method. This method consists of taking two milliliters of aliquot of finished product, chip out in a petri dish, and later adding the culture media. In the microbiological laboratory, we use the orange serum media for acid tolerant microorganisms, RBBA for total coliform, and PDA for total acidophilic. As this method is one with the most need, generate a high workload and the use of sterile pipettes is also very high. Looking for alternative to reduce cost. Advantage of Picus electronic pipette versus sterile disposable pipettes, low cost. There were problems with the knobs due to skill required to use it, making the routine work sometimes complicated. The high numbers of hours required made the process slow, time versus cost. One box of sterile pipettes, 500 pieces, are equal to buy 2,000 tips. Easy handling, easy to use. The use of Picus pipettes makes easy, fast, ergonomic, repeatable, and reproducible the daily work. Reduction of cross-contamination risk. It was very usual to clean material areas and devices to avoid cross-contamination. Especially surrounding areas, the uses of Bunsen burning is frequently dangerous. This is solved with the use of sterile pipette tips. PICUS implement in our procedures guaranteed success in the last four years. Easy to use no matter the sample. For our, for our very viscous products with high pool content, the pipetting is easy and the samples are as easily dispensed as water. The pipette is very light. Facilitate operation, especially with high volume of samples, to be processed per day. Since the implementation of PICUS micro pipettes, we have not had reports of injuries or discomfort due to dispensing or liquids with work routines. The sartorius pipettes are comfortable and intuitive use. Easy to change and clean. It allows an easy change of work volumes and sample types. Cleaning. The sartorius pipettes are very easy to clean and autoclaving. Service. I feel support by both sartorial customer and technical service. They support us in preventive and corrective maintenance, calibration, and training all year round. Thank you. Thank you, Gabriela, for your insights. All right, hi, I'm Paulus Artimo, and I'll be uh, now uh, diving us deeper into the benefits of electronic pipettes uh, and some of the features that, that Gabriella was, was uh, introducing to us. Um, but to help me set the scene, I'll start from the very beginning. 
So pipetting is the most common lab task and accurate pipetting is the basis on which most lab work builds on. And, and pipettes are precision measuring instruments that require extensive training and, and hands-on experience to produce repeatable and accurate experiment results. Um, most laboratory professionals have picked up their first pipette during studies with limited to no training and have learned on the go and have had to learn the hard way. Um, here I've got two graphs and on the left we can see um, results of, of, uh, from 53 uh, biopharmaceutical uh, quality control technicians and their individual skills in pipetting accuracy and precision uh, in, in dispensing small volumes. Uh, and and um, you can see how, how there's a huge variance between uh, the, the different individuals here uh, in, in a group that you would think uh, would be on the top of their game and, and uh, have, have very precise results. Um, the, the group was then um, trained uh, in, in formal training for, for pipetting techniques and, and the results after the training can can be seen on the right. And now you see what you expect from, from professionals to, to uh, have really accurate and precise results. And, and the whole group uh, were, were able to have reproducible. So the whole lab tree would now be uh, producing reproducible um, results. And, and this really shows you why, why it's important to have formal pipetting training. Um, because only with proper training uh, can lab professionals uh, produce these sort of repeatable and reliable results. Um, but the pipetting technique consists of, of knowing the proper basics. So basics like uh, what angle the pipe should be at, what depth they, uh, to aspirate from, and, and where in the dark uh, the target vessel to dispense to. Also, how you should handle your specific liquid, take it into account the viscosity, uh, for example, volatility, temperature, and, and uh, specific um, attributes like, like um, in, in juice, pipetting juice, the, the pulp content. But also handling of the pipette, and especially how the piston movement uh, is, is uh, controlled manually. So, um, the last one requires the most practical experience. And, and here is where electronic pipettes can step in. The graph shows three different groups on how you would expect that their pipetting performance shows. So uh, the first group, the inexperienced, are people that are new to pipetting. Um, the moderately experienced are laboratory technicians. And the experts uh, that, that we used here are accredited service technicians. And, and there's a clear correlation between the experience and, and the variation results. And, and you can see the smaller the pipetting volume, the, the um, higher the variation with the experienced um, group is. But with an electronic pipette that, that re relieves the professional of the piston control, the results show smaller variance between operators. So on the, the um, graph on the right, uh, all of the uh, three groups then, then used electronic pipettes to do the same sort of experiment. And, and there's practically no difference between the different volumes, but also between the different groups. But how does the electronic pipette then really do this? So, when using a mechanical pipette, the more experienced users have sophisticated piston control, whereas for the less experienced ones, it's uneven and, and maybe a little bit jerky. And this affects the accuracy and precision. Um, and, and this is uh, one of the major error sources recognized by the, the uh, uh, ISO standard uh, on air displacement pipettes. But the electronic pipette gives reproducible results because the pipetted volumes are independent of pipetting experience as hand control is eliminated. It's, it's, uh, the, the piston is controlled by an electric motor. Um, but we still need to uh, follow up with the proper uh, pipetting practices 
such as the, the pipetting angle, aspiration depth, um, pre-wetting of the pipe tips. So, so really, um, as electronic pipettes have, um, can, can be a, a very a good tool to uh, harmonize uh, results, but you still need um, proper training to get uh, best possible results. So there really are two main pipetting principles. Um, there's forward pipetting, normal pipetting, or just pipetting that people are, are used to calling it, where the target volume of liquid is aspirated into the tip, and the tip is completely empty to do, during dispensing. Uh, this is corresponding to the uh, left picture, the A1. So there's the amount of liquid uh, coming into the tip, how we set the pipette. But the second, a very powerful technique is, is reverse pipetting, uh, which is on the right, the, the uh, picture B, where you see that there's a little bit more liquid inside the tip on the right. Um, so the target volume uh, with an extra amount is aspirated, but only the target volume is then dispensed. So how is this done? Let, let's look at it from a mechanical pipette point of view. So you would actually uh, press the, um, the piston all the way down to a second stop. Then you would aspirate the liquid and release the, the, the piston to the, to the top. And when you dispense, you only press it to the first stop, leaving a little bit of liquid inside. And, and then you can re, uh, discard this, this um, uh, rest of the liquid. And, and next I'm going to show you why this is powerful and explain what's the advantage coming from this technique. But we need to be thinking about this because this is um, one of the principles or the main principle behind the um, most of the um, pipetting modes of the electronic pipette beyond just normal pipetting and reverse pipetting. So let's uh, think about uh, some difficult uh, liquids like viscose liquids, such as syrup, um, which, which can be a problem when pipetting as, as they have a higher resistance to flow and a higher tendency to stick on tip surface. Now, reverse pipetting and electronic pipettes multi-dispensing techniques compensate for the liquid, uh, li liquid's tendency to adhere to the tip walls. So uh, when we look at the graph, we see that with forward pipetting, the dispensed volume jumps up, up and down with glycerol until after about five pipettings with the same tip. But with reverse pipetting and multi-dispensing, the results are good already from the first times. And this is because the amount of viscose liquid that sticks to the plastic walls of, of the pipe at tip are actually reduced from the excess amount. And we, we still dispense the full target volume while um, having some of the liquid stick to the walls. And you still get uh, the, the accurate target volume that you're looking for. But everyone who has worked with, with Syrup knows also that speed plays a role here. So an electronic pipette allows for setting the best speed and to harmonize the speed between users. Um, here, uh, the, the uh, graph shows three different example speeds of the Picos pipette. Um, speed number one is the slowest, uh, speed eight, would be close to what you would expect from a mechanical pipette user pipetting water. So the power of the electronic pipette is that you can set the speed and it will be the same in the morning, after lunch, and also uh, once you start to feel tired uh, during the, the shift. But also the speed will be the same for everybody. So now with a mechanical pipette, there's this, um, um, everybody's personal piping practice, how like it's like handwriting, and and we remove this by 
setting the um, electronic pipette settings the same for the same liquid for everybody in the lab. Beverage labs usually work with sugary and viscose liquids. Uh, so the first is bad for your teeth, but both of them are bad for your pipette. So if the liquid enters the interior of the pipette, um, they will need cleaning and might require maintenance, which is why many uh, labs choose to use filter tips. But with filter tips, an important thing to note is that your liquid shouldn't come into contact with the filter. Um, so you might not have thought about this, but if you're only using forward pipetting, but with reverse pipetting and the pipetting modes of the electronic pipette, this is very important. Uh, the pipette tip should have enough space to hold the entire volume without the user having to worry about the liquid touching the filter, as this would impair the repeatability of the results. Now, some manufacturers report the maximum volume that their filter tips can hold in reverse pipetting, as it is lower than the nominal volume or the, the um, maximum volume of the tip. Uh, so, look at the uh, choose pipette tips that that um, are designed to have extra space and allow using the entire volume range of the pipette. Because when you're using the electronic pipette, you don't want to uh, restrict yourself and think about okay, what's the maximum volume that I can use. So here in this video, you saw uh, us us um, pipette with with four different uh, filter tips, the the liquid into the tip. And, and with the, the three ones on the right, you can see that the liquid touches the filter. So these, uh, these aren't suitable for, for uh, say, full volume multi-dispensing or reverse pipetting. But the, the uh, safety space filter tip on the left with the extra space uh, has plenty of room. Uh, so in case there even might be some, some bubbles or foaming, uh, you still don't touch the filter and, and uh, lose any of the sample or the accuracy. But now if you don't think filtered pipette tips are necessary, um, you might consider uh, pipettes that are compatible with so-called safe cone filters. Uh, these filters are inserted into the mouth of the pipette and will protect the pipette for about 50 to 250 pipetting cycles. So you don't get any splashes inside the, the pipette and, and thus uh, contaminate it or, or require uh, further um, maintenance. One of the main reasons why people switch to electronic pipettes, uh, and, and something Gabriella also mentioned that they really appreciate, is the ergonomics of the pipette. So the first thing that might come to your mind with um, about electronic pipettes is that they, they must be large and heavy to accommodate for, for all the technology. But now think about your own pockets and how much smaller your, your average phones have become, although they have even more and more technology. So a modern electronic pipette is the same weight and size of a mechanical pipette, which makes it easier to adopt them. But really, the, um, the ergonomic highlight is, is the electronic uh, operations. By just with the press of a button, uh, you can do all of the different um, functions of the pipette. And from a repetitive strain point of view, the best feature uh, can be the electronic tip ejection. As tip ejection is the single most force demanding step in the pipetting cycle, um, it might not be straining as an individual event, but as you can see here in the graph, um, there, there's quite some um, force required to do this. So here there are six mechanical pipettes and their ejection forces, uh, including the mechanical tacta pipette, um, next to the tip ejection force of, of uh, Sartorius Picus. Um, so they're from 30 newtons uh, to, to 11 or 12 newtons with the, the uh, mechanical pipettes when you have to press a button and, and uh, drop the tip. But now with an electronic pipette, with just the press of a, 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 a small button, um, you, you can uh, eject the tip. And, and uh, the difference is like 30 newtons doesn't sound, 
33 newtons doesn't sound too bad. But after you repeat it multiple times, like hundreds of times, it accumulates. Um, and, and let's look at the whole um, cumulative force per pipetting cycle. So a, a single pipetting cycle, which includes the aspiration, the dispensing uh, blowout in case of forward pipetting, and also tip ejection is reported here for an electronic pipette and a mechanical one. Now, the electronic pipette with the electronic tip ejection reduces the force uh, by about 85%. And the difference when you, when you uh, take into account all of the different, uh, the hundreds of pipetting cycles you do, so um, you're really looking at whether you want to do 1,400 newtons of work versus 10,000 newtons of work. And this is something that, that um, is, is the reason why, why uh, when Gabriela mentioned that they, they don't see or, or they don't get reports of hand complaints anymore, because when you switch to electronic pipettes, the, the amount of work you need to do with your hands and, and your fingers is, is significantly reduced. So finally, the electronic pipettes also give us the possibility to ensure that everyone in the lab is following the same procedure uh, to the point uh, that, that we can save the settings into it. So some pipettes also allow for saving whole workflows, which will help save time and promote best pipetting practice. So I've, I've got an example for you. So quite a common pipetting workflow you might use is a dilution series. So my method here has a ratio of one to three dilution in multiple steps. I begin with dispensing the diluent of water to sample tubes. Then I thoroughly mix the starting sample, dispense it to the next tube. Again, mix and transfer. And I could save this protocol, so there's no need to change the settings every time. And remember the different speed settings that are optimal. Um, and, and you can use any and all pipetting modes of the pipette and create just the right setup for your method. Um, and, and it's, it's also possible that, that you, you can choose a, a pipette that, that allows for password protecting this. So, so you can uh, integrate your method, your, your standard operating procedure into your pipette, um, um, save it and, and, and protect it from, from uh, anybody inadvertently changing it. Um, so only those with authorization can change it. So what I want you to take home is that electronic pipette can reduce the variance inside your lab, promote the best pipetting practice, and take everyone to the expert level, but the ergonomics as well. So it will protect the user's hand from hand pain and reduce the effect of fatigue to results. It can also speed up your work help protect the workflow so it's done as it should be every time. I want to thank you, all of you, uh, for your attention. And now we'll have uh, time for your questions. Thank you, Gabriella and Paulus, for your informative presentation. We will now start the live Q&A portion of the webinar. If you have a question you'd like to ask, please do so now just click on the Ask a Question box located on the far left of your screen, and we'll answer as many of your questions as we have time for. So let's get started. We've already got some great questions coming in from the audience. So Paulus, we're gonna go ahead and, um, and start with you. Here's our first question. We also have liquids that have high pulp content, and we have a problem that the pipettes get clogged. We sometimes cut the tips so the pulp passes through. What would you recommend? So, so thanks for that. So this is uh, this is something that that's more common that, than uh, than one would expect. So, uh, but actually, uh, cutting the pipe at tips has a huge effect on the accuracy. So I would recommend instead that you try uh, so-called wide bore pipette tips. So they have a larger opening. Um, with these tips, you could stop cutting the tips, uh, and so saving you time. Um, but in case you're 
just transferred liquid and the the um the actual volume or the accuracy doesn't doesn't count uh then then the cutting tips might be possible but anyway checking the whiteboard tips will will save you the conveni convenience of it great thank you so much pa so much palace and it looks like we have another question for you so we sample high viscosity liquids and it is difficult to get all of the liquid out. How can I solve this issue? Um, so there's a couple of things um, you could try. Uh, first of all, um, I, I, I recommend using the reverse pipetting technique that I, I, I talked about just now. Uh, with it, you get the right volume and, and uh, as you don't totally empty the tip out, um, it's, it's uh, easier to get the the uh, target volume uh, out of it. Um, also, uh, as, as mentioned, pipe it really slowly so the liquid has time to come out of the tip, but, but also think about low retention uh, pipe it tips um, as, as the, the sticky liquids won't, won't be uh, adhering uh, to the plastic. Um, you, you get more accurate results and it's easier to get all of the, the liquid out. Great, thank you so much. Um, this audience member mentioned, you know, I've worked in a lab for over 10 years, but I've never had pipetting training other than from what I've received from my colleagues. Do you, does Sartorius or do you offer any type of training program? Yeah, yeah, so we do. And, and actually this is something that's, that's um, something we, we um, encounter quite often that, that people uh, are, are not. Uh, receiving formal training, but so um, Sartorius offers this this um, training uh, concept, so-called pipetting academy. Uh, you can contact us to arrange a training session for your lab uh, for for say basic pipetting techniques, uh, going into more depth than than I, I went just through now. Uh, there's also um, pipetting ergonomics, uh, pipet maintenance, and and many more. So we usually arrange this sort of trainings at, at customer sites um, for for a larger group. Uh, but but during the the uh, uh, pandemic, uh, we've had also good experience in virtual training. So so um, you, you should you should uh, contact uh, a local uh, representative and, and and book your yours for for your lab. Thank you, Paulus. Now, moving on to our next question. Are the Sartorius pipettes autoclavable? Yeah, um, so so you need to, to uh, take care here. So some of them are. So the Sartorius mechanical pipettes, uh, Takta, uh, Proline Plus, and Emmeline are fully autoclavable. Um, the, um, the Proline mechanical is not. Uh, it's an older design and, and with different um, materials used. And also the, the electronic pipettes. So the lower parts are, but don't put the handle with, with all the electronics in an autoclave. So if, if autoclavability for the pipette is really important, then, then the electronic pipette not, might not be the, the choice for yourself. So check the uh, fully autoclavable uh, pipettes that, that we offer. Great, thank you so much. I do want to remind our audience um, that any questions that you submit today or that we're not able to get to or any questions that come in during the on-demand period will be addressed by our speakers via the contact information that you provided at the time of registration. So let's go ahead and move on to our next question. This, this audience member asks, is there a way to protect pipettes and sides from splashes? Um, yeah, so so there are ways. So of, of obviously the, the the first thing is is to use proper uh, piping technique and uh, and um, not go into that sort of speeds that that you would get splashes. But I I, I briefly mentioned um, the sort called uh, safe cone filters, uh, and and these are the filters that that you would actually insert inside the the, the tip cone of the pipette. And, and this protects the the insides, um, and and it's it's a it's a really nifty um, 
accessory for it as as uh, it, it keeps the, the pipette better and and if if there's uh, new people in the lab uh, or or something that we really recommend for the um, student labs uh, in academia uh, to to uh, use this so you never get uh, the the liquids inside so and it's easy to change but remember to change this every now and again the, the filter isn't isn't the, the ultimate protection it needs to be changed so so uh, so look into this. Great, thank you so much. And it looks like we've got a couple more questions from the audience today. So now what would be the best way to clean the pipettes after use? Mm. So so the pipette should be cleaned on the outside. Um, um, they they uh, tolerate uh, most common um, cleaning agents, uh, but, but uh, you should check if if you got something a uh, little bit little bit more um, stronger that that you want to use. Um, so so for Sartorius uh, pipettes, check the cleaning and decontamination guide that we offer. And and uh, when it comes to more thorough uh, cleaning, um, we're we're uh, going to uh, launch this or, or publish this um, uh, pipette cleaning guide. Uh, it's a video that that's coming, and and that that tells you more about the the uh, internal part cleaning. So you don't have to leave the 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 cleaning to the the bi yearly or or once a year maintenance call call that that you or send when you send them to calibration. Great, thank you so much for that for that explanation, Pallas. And it looks like we have time for one more question. So our last question, Pallas, goes right back to you. Can I use other than Sartorius pipette tips with my Sartorius pipette? So, so the Sartorius pipettes work best with our own pipette tips, as, as these have been designed together. But there are other brands that can be used, but you should carefully look into uh, about the compatibility and and. Uh, you can't just determine the compatibility by, by, by testing the physical fit, but you really need to check the performance and, and to see if, if the performance that you get with the system uh, is, is um, good enough for, for your needs. So, so there is um, nothing that you could say this sort of um, universal pipette tip. So there's always these design differences. So um, look into this. Uh, we recommend the Sartorius pipette tips, but, but uh, in case your lab is using something else, uh, you, could, you could try this, but remember to, to verify it uh, with an analytical balance and, and through your calibration. Great, thank you so much. And we would like to thank you again, Gabriela and Paulus, for your time today and your important research. We would also like to thank Labbert and our sponsor, Sartorius, for underwriting today's educational webcast. Before we go, I'd like to thank the audience for joining us today and for their interesting questions, questions that we did not have time for today and those submitted during the on-demand period will be addressed by our speakers via the contact information that you provided at the time of registration. So please keep those questions coming in. We are happy to answer all of them for you. Sartorius so will be sending in an FAQ following the broadcast for any questions you may have missed during today's webinar. This webcast can be viewed on demand. Labrits will alert you via email when it's available for replay. We encourage you to share that email with your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. Until next time, thank you for joining us. Bye-bye, everyone.